Hi, um, so a while ago I picked up a couple of these home energy monitors, which are nothing particularly special, but what I found a bit interesting is the display. Now this is clearly a segmented LCD. Um, obviously it's a cheap device, they, yeah, they wouldn't splash out on a TFT, and you can tell just by the, um, the, the sort of crisp appearance of the segments that this is clearly a segmented display. But the interesting thing about it is its colour. So I thought, oh, that's strange, what the hell they do that? And if I reduce the shutter time on the camera, you can see that what they're actually doing is they're actually using sequential colour. They've got an RGB backlight and they're just switching three sets of um, LCD data to produce that colour. So for a relative low power, low cost display, can have eight colours and produce a really nice um, crisp colour display for quite low cost. Now, it does look like this is actually supported directly by the LCD controller, they're not just reloading the segment data on every frame because the, the RGB signals are on the flex. Now I don't know whether the LCD controller is outputting the data to drive the LEDs or whether the microcontroller is just giving it the, uh, the data that it's lighting the LEDs and giving it the appropriate feel. But as the, um, the, yeah, the LCD controller itself is, is aware of it, I'd imagine the LCD controller is actually what's generating all the timing and output the RGB signal. So it's just a standalone um, thing. So you just talk to it like an ordinary LCD controller and it handles the, um, the colour stuff and you just provide some uh, LED drivers externally. So we only see the colour when it's on its own backlight as soon as we go to a uh, plain backlight you know all we're seeing is uh, just a simple monochrome um, display and of course what gets interesting is if you take another one where the backlight isn't synchronized you get nice uh, this nice weird psychedelic um, rainbow color thing happening now one thing you should probably wear, that, obviously this is a, probably a fairly special LCD because most LCDs couldn't switch, can't really switch that quickly. The, um, the cycle time on this is about 70 hertz. Most LCDs won't switch that quickly, so obviously using a special LCD designed for fast switching. But of course as you cool LCDs down, they get slow, so if we just spray some um, freezer on here, the switching time is probably going to get too slow to actually do it, switch um, fast enough. So you can actually see the colours go a lot duller. And as it warms up again, you can see the colour returns to uh, normal. This thing uses this uh, clamp-on current transformer. Um, you sort of clip this around the, one of the um, leads in, the, in your electrical box to um, sense the current. And it just transmits it over a simple radio link. And obviously to, produce, to make this thing read, I need to generate quite a high current. So um, the way I'm doing that, I'm just using a toroidal transformer just with a few turns turns around it. This is a quite convenient way of producing uh, high AC currents without ridiculous amounts of power. And toroidals are just convenient because you've got the hole through them or you could use another transformer but it's harder to get the wire, the wire through. Um, so the nice thing about this is we can generate a, um, a very low voltage at a high current but because it's only at a very low voltage the actual um, overall power isn't particularly high. So sort of the, the simplest way is literally just a single turn. So if I sort of Use my clamp meter. I can get, I can get sort of like 50 amps on that that output with just um, 50 milliamps going in. But also with a clamp me, any clamp meter, you can just if you wind the um, the wire through multiple times, then that multiplies the current. So if I um, now put this this around three three turns. So that's reading sort of about 150, so that's multiplying the current by a factor of three. Now obviously this, is th this thing is only sensing current, so it's having to make an assumption about the voltage, uh, which in the UK is, is, is usually 240. Well, no, so this the, the reading of this don't seem to be particularly accurate. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how accurate this clamp meter is. So if we stick this on 20 amps, if we take the nominal European voltage, although the UK is actually typically about 240, the nominal voltage is 230. I think it's something like plus 10% or plus minus 10%. So they actually changed it from 230 to, sorry, 240 to 230, but the, with the tolerances, they didn't actually change the voltage, they only changed the spec. So 20 amps at 230 should be 4.6 kilowatts, and this does seem to be um, under reading. And it may be because this, it might be because this sensor is perhaps a little bit close to the, um, the transformer. I'm not sure, maybe just think this thing isn't uh, super accurate. Um, most UK supplies have between a 60 and 100 amp supply fuse. 
so I wouldn't expect this to read much over 100 amps which should be sort of 23 kilowatts but it does seem to be reading quite a lot lower than that and if we just crank it up really high it doesn't seem to give any sort of error indication it seems to be sort of you know if we just crank it to sort of ridiculous current sort of 250 amps it just reads the maximum it doesn't actually give any sort of over range indication or any indication that something might be uh, going wrong it seems to sort of top out at about um, about 22 and a half kilowatts and this would do all the usual sort of stuff like displaying energy used over time you can put a cost thing so you can show sort of um, costs for sort of build management and so on slightly amusing that even when your house is pulling supposedly 230 amps you've still got this nice green happy house so it might be uh, nice if it just gave some uh, expression of horror or something when you're pulling that much power. Uh, there's nothing else particularly interesting about this. Um, the, the current clamp um, is powered by a CR2 cell, which they claim lasts about a year. And what's interesting, there's actually a, a LED in there, which I've never never actually seen light up. I did check that it is actually a LED, it's not like a, a sensor to detect that this has gone dark and to make sure it's been clamped up properly and there's actually a button but they didn't appear to do anything that's maybe to do with just resetting or uh, something it seems to auto pair when you power it up the first time it seems to um, pair with the receiver automatically unfortunately the receiver in this other one um, I couldn't get to work so I think there might be something wrong with that so I couldn't investigate how it actually does the pairing but I suspect it is you know you turn this on and then the first one of these it then sees um, it assumes is belongs to it um, these things are normally designed to run sort of, um, powered from the mains but they do have a battery I think the idea is that you can take them around to the various appliances in the house to see how much the appliances take slightly surprising they're actually using three nickel metal hydrides rather than the lithium in there not quite sure why they do that maybe sort of shipping issues or something I wouldn't have thought these would be cheaper than um, lithium um, this has only got like about a five hour battery life. I, may, I suppose it may also be these pretty got slightly high voltage so perhaps to get the RGB backlight they could use that without any voltage boosting whereas with the lithium they would needed um, a voltage booster. Uh, the microcontroller in both of these is uh, an EM250 which is a, Z a Zigbee um, microcontroller so they're clearly using the Z Zigbee protocol which is quite common in um, energy monitoring type applications but everything else in here is, uh, is pretty straightforward. And the sensor says it's a current transformer. Again, same micro in here, just a few other components, which will presumably be for just for signal conditioning from the signal from the current transformer. Actually, looking in here, it says copyright 2010, so it's quite an old design, so that might perhaps explain why they're um, using the chemical metal hydride sort of that long ago. Um, lithium polymers were probably uh, a bit more expensive than they are today, so that might explain that. So I just did, did a bit of online searching and found this um, sequential field colour um, LCD tech is uh, offered by quite a lot of the um, normal custom LCD supplier sets. So looks like it's a fairly um, mainstream offering. Well, so I, I don't think I've actually seen it seen it before, but there's uh, quite a few different people offering it. But so it's quite a nice, well, nice way of getting uh, nice colourful displays, but without the cost and power consumption of um, a full-on uh, colour TFT.